Well, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, it's good to see you guys. How are how are you doing on this Tuesday morning? I'm doing great. I'm yeah. I'm kind of this Tuesday. <laughs> Can it be Tuesday already? <laughs> it always is. I it's know. always that. Yeah. Right? Crazy. You want to talk about the date? You want to talk about that? That that's that's that that'll alleviate some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're the fact that it's August 18th. Halfway done. We're way more than halfway done with August. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. But things are good, though, right? They are. Yeah. They are, they are good. We're, uh, I'm excited about what we've been talking about in our 714s, but also in services and yeah. just new perspective in life and, and with the, what we have left and counting our days. So. Yes. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this is these these moments and these times at 714 that you guys are taking part of too have been helping you count your days as well. <laughs> yeah. Boy, yeah. the uh, the sermon this past weekend was awesome. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just continues to be good and even better, better and better and better. It seems like it's just yeah. crazy yeah. good stuff. Yeah. God is good. That's yeah. good. So this this uh, this series is a six week series, correct? That is correct. Now what? Yeah. And uh, at the end of it, uh, Byron's been um, he's been wanting us to uh, say something about the baptism. Yeah. In a few weeks. They've yeah. got to be by a week from this Sunday. The baptism videos, so yes. that we can edit them and do whatever the technical people do to make those yeah. flow together so Thanks please remember that yeah yeah Plug in that um, um, with yeah. That. yeah uh a, a couple other just a couple other things for for me um and i don't know if any anyone out there is interested uh but they might be part of my men's group that was we we ran into a covid situation about a month ago and uh, we're going to start that men's group, Monday morning men's group in Edgerton at 9 a.m. starting on the 31st of August. So a week from this yeah. coming Sunday, this coming Monday, two weeks from today, two weeks from t tomorrow, today, yesterday. <laughs> August 31st. <laughs> August 31st, be there. August 31st, yes. there it is. August 31st at 9 a.m. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and um, I don't get up to Angola very often, but I'm coming to Angola this Sunday. Woo! You are? I am. Well, of course yeah. you would. I won't be here. That's awesome. Oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Who's going to be there? Whom else? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I'll be in Angola this uh, coming Sunday. I'm I'm looking forward to connecting with those who uh, do the 714s, I'm excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. Meet some people that I've never even met before, or I met them and didn't even know that I met them. So yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty fired up. Well, cool. All right. Levi, I felt like you had something to say, you wanted to say earlier on. I was just going to say about the baptisms. You know how amazing they are when we do these baptism services in person. Well, now we're going to be able to, like, watch the video again if we want to. Like yeah. We can go back and say, like, oh, I just need to be inspired. My yeah. faith needs a boost. I'm going to go back and watch some people get baptized Yeah. Uh, with Life Changing Church. So, like, that's just even, I think it could potentially be even more amazing yeah. than the baptism services we've done in person. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's great. Uh, it, I think it'll be awesome. You're absolutely right. Well, cool. Cool, cool. Let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's get into the Word. All right. All right. Come on. We find ourselves in Matthew chapter 12, um, and uh, we'll just kind of we'll just kind of get after this, and it should be interesting. I'm I'm interested to hear some some of your guys' thoughts. So at any time you just want to stop me, just go ahead and stop me. Um, I'll be reading out of the New International Version, and here we go. <clears throat> verse or chapter 12, verse one. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. 
He answered, haven't you read what David did when he, he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests in the temple desecrate the day and yet are innocent? I tell you that the one that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the innocent for the son of man is the Lord of the Sabbath. There we go. Yeah, mm. it's a good place. Maybe a woe well right there. <laughs> well, good. Group of people that are like so intentionally scrutinizing Jesus. Mm -hmm. I imagine these disciples are out there with their sickles in their carts and they're loading up. I mean, they're like picking at the grain and as they're walking, walking through. OK, yeah. so they're literally going, ha, did you see him peck, pluck that little piece of grain as he was walking? <laughs> Let's get him, boys. Like, <laughs> wow. That's, that's uh, again, scene. another parallel we can see to today where people are looking. Yeah. They're looking just for what other people are doing wrong, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, wow. Yikes. I'm kind of afraid of those Pharisees. It uh it's pretty cool to chew on a on a on a thing of wheat. Uh, I don't even what to, what do you call that? A shaft of wheat or whatever. It's uh I don't know if you ever have before, but uh it starts out uh kind of dry and but uh I've done it before just to see what it would taste like and it you end up spitting it out usually, but it was, yeah, it was, it was cool. So, um, talking about this, uh, I, I'm a rule breaker. I, I don't know if anybody knows that or not. Or believes it. <laughs> uh, boy, tell me something I can't do. And that's what I want to do. I don't know. Just, the, just the nature of me, I guess. But uh, I, I, I was reading a little bit, uh, doing a little research, and the Pharisees had established uh, 39 categories of actions forbidden on the Sabbath. <laughs> now, they didn't get that from Scripture. They wrote it themselves, yeah, right? Yeah, it was their, yeah it was, their, it was their deal. What they had interpreted, Scripture said. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm thinking... Tell me, tell me things that I can do, not that I can't do. That's what I want to know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know the positive versus the negative side of that all. But, uh, yeah, it was based on um, God's law and their customs and their interpretations. 39 categories. It, does, it didn't say what those were, but um, uh, it was just a bunch of technicalities, you know, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm thinking as as Nate was reading this, I'm thinking I'm seeing these guys come through this wheat field, and somebody just reaches over and breaks off a a, a wheat shaft and and just sticks it in his mouth and starts chewing on it. No, you know, no big deal. But it does say that they were hungry. They did it out of hunger. I don't know how much they they got out of that, but um, yeah. it was interesting. Hungry. They weren't harvesting the wheat for crying out loud. Right. <laughs> so they were just getting something to eat. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think that's the important part of all of it too. Is it's not it's not the action that what they were doing. It was the timing of when they did it. Apparently, yeah, obviously, because it was on the Sabbath. Because what they were doing was completely legal. Uh, in fact, that was a part of what people did that time was they would farmers would leave. They would leave some grain left over so people could come through and pick through and have something to eat. In fact, I, what I find really interesting is that um, if you if you rewind uh, back in uh, Jesus's timeline of his of his ancestry or whatever, you see Ruth, who, Ruth and Boaz, and you that that's a huge portion of their story. Is that Ruth was she was going through and she was gleaning from what the from what Boaz's workers were leaving behind and uh and so i just find that really i just find it kind of a cool cool yeah. parallel with the scenario right here yeah. um but what i really find interesting too is this is that um he, we see we see his his disciples who were obviously it says they were hungry right yeah. so they're hungry at this yeah. time uh, what i find really interesting is is then later on down the road we see <laughs> we see 
one of the greatest miracles that Jesus has ever performed is that he provides provides food for thousands <laughs> in the midst of, with very little. And yet his closest followers are, are there aren't, he's not feeding them that way. I just find this really, I just, ah, yes. Yeah. 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 Could easily just like, Hey, here's food. But, but a part of what he was talking about though, too, was just, uh, is that father, the father will continue to provide for you, you know? Um, yeah. In fact, that was a kind of a command when he sent out his, sent out the people, sent out his followers is don't take anything with you. Yeah. You're gonna be provided right. for. Yeah. So, uh, uh, just a couple a couple points that I just, I thought found really interesting and all of that. Yeah, with 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 you saying that, I'm just uh, imagining these guys walking through the field, and one of the disciples say, "Hey, we're gonna eat sometime." I mean, <laughs> last time we ate was like, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, and uh, well, there's food right there in front of you. Just pick off uh, one of the shafts of wheat. Sure. I don't I don't know what he said, but uh, the. It's interesting to me that what we're talking about exactly right here is the the, the Pharisees had zero compassion. Mm -hmm. It was, um, I mean, it doesn't matter what Jesus did, they were going to find wrong in it. Boy, sure. does that sound familiar. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They, they, they had no compassion. For anything that he did, he could do everything right, and it would still be wrong. Yeah. Mm. I mean. <laughs> I think Jesus knew his audience here. He knew his audience because his first response was, haven't you read in the scriptures yeah. what David did? Yeah. Yes. To the Pharisees, they were Hebrews, mm. and that is what made them so special. Right. And so what? who is more Hebrew than David, right? Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, so he knew he's like, I'm going go straight to your heart and what's important to you to make some points. Yeah. David, his companions were hungry. He went into the house. He actually went into the church and said, "Look at this, the sacred bread," and let's let's eat it. And then how about uh, and P.S. Uh, the law of Moses again, Hebrews. This is really important to them. When they're on duty in the temple, they're working on the Sabbath. Yeah. So he spoke really personally to their to to what they were challenging him with. Um. And then, of course, then the, he's like, "What it's really about is mercy." Yeah. yeah, and and it had nothing to do with Jesus wanting to break break the break law on Sabbath. Right. The law of the Sabbath that had nothing to do with it. it. Had to do with the fact of breaking the idea that man-made law was the biggest issue in all of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, man, and just that nitpicking. It's <laughs> just what what Rick was talking about is that you find that place of just looking for anything, anything, anything. Yeah, to pick apart and and in it too. Like, but don't you realize that this has been a part of us all along? Like. You, we talk. Let's talk about David, and let's talk about your very own priest, and and what that looked like. Like, I mean, and you're gonna you're gonna point this out. Like, it does. I mean, it does run. It does run parallel with you know. It, it nothing's changed over time. Nothing new underneath the sun, right? And so, it's it's still something that I think I find it really interesting because we're gonna talk a little bit about some of this stuff this upcoming weekend, and I'm kind of excited about uh, just this point of view that people that we find ourselves in and uh, yeah, and, and flipping the script on that. So, and that's what Jesus is trying to do. Like, listen, what's more important people, what's more important. Yeah. So the, the Pharisees have obviously lost the spirit of the law. And uh, I don't know if this is where it came from, but I've often used the phrase, the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's where, I mean, they were, the letter of the law, and this yeah. is the way it has to be. There's no right, there's no left. You you've got to follow it, you know, to the letter. Yeah. And um, uh, they just they just lost the spirit of all of that. So uh, talking about where what you, uh, Levi, you had said something about uh, David, um, and I did a little research on that and the special bread when he when they went in to eat was the day old bread. So the consecrated bread was for, 
um, was used, but there it wasn't always all used up. So the priests would eat that, is my understanding. Well, mm -hmm. that's what David David did, uh, and and God didn't condemn him for it. He didn't punish him for that, um, and and yet it was and it was referenced here of what Jesus referenced him and what what took place then, and and I think David was hungry. Right. <laughs> it was a human need and versus the letter of the law. So, so I see what this means, though. Like, so after a youth event, like maybe someday again, and we're serving pizza or something like that, <laughs> there's half a pizza left. Yeah. I can uh, yeah. just take it home. Is, is that, that, that's what I'm getting out of today's talk? <laughs> yes, yes. Or a Snickers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's not, but it's not okay for somebody, for you to give it to somebody else as they come in, by the way. So it's, <laughs> it's only only you can have it, by the way. <laughs> so let's talk about let's let's continue on and get into the can, can yeah let's do part it. of that because I think this Jesus begins to really dig into this in here in just a minute. So <clears throat> going from uh, on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there, looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. They asked him. Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? And he said to them, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on Sabbath, on the Sabbath, will you take not take a hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a man than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored just as just as sound of the as the just as sound as the others. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that, uh, you know, it didn't it didn't stop there. He didn't just stop in that that moment where they're pointing him out like, OK, so let's take this a whole nother step further because I know what you're going to do. So let's go into the synagogue and let's 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 find this opportunity. Let's see what let's see what went happened. into the beast the hive, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I just love the fact that in, in here in maybe this is even the crux of the matter is too, is that here is this man with a shriveled hand in the middle of the temple, middle of the synagogue, looking for something, looking for healing, looking for anything in that moment. Yeah. And who know who knows exactly the reason that he is there, but Jesus finds him there and says, right here. This is this is the bigger deal in the midst of all of this. And uh, I just love the fact that he goes right after it. <laughs> isn't it isn't it cool that uh, where we have seen uh, when we studied scripture here uh, before where someone has said, hey, hey, Jesus, hey, hey, here I am. I got this. He didn't do that. It says in my scripture says. Jesus noticed a man with a deformed hand. This guy wasn't shouting out saying, I mean, maybe he didn't even know who Jesus was. What's cool was Jesus went to him, saw that he was deformed, mm -hmm. saw, saw the need and healed him on the Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. On the Sabbath, healed him on the Sabbath, did work on the Sabbath. That would be absolute work on the Sabbath. Yeah, I mean, even if it was a click of the fingers, it was work to heal the man on the Sabbath. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm looking at that as Jesus was bigger than the Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Um, bigger than rituals, bigger than rules, bigger than regulations mm -hmm. and the letter of the law. Mm -hmm. Which he makes that claim in, earlier on in verse three, for the son of man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So and for so, doing good, they're plotting to kill him. Does this even make sense? Well, I think at this point they're also looking foolish. Well, they are. <laughs> yeah. so that, I think that was part of their motivation too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's really interesting in all of this too is that, um, I mean, all he all he just continues to ratchet it up. For the for them, you know, and just this idea, like I almost I almost hear that, like what what when we started talking about it, when we started going through it, the fact that 
here he goes. He's going to this next space. We're going to go into the synagogue. He's like, almost like, you think that tightens your tunic? Wait till I go into here and watch what takes place. All right. Like, <laughs> like I'm going to go in here and, and this is going to be, this is a big deal to you. This is going to be, this is going to be a really big deal. And uh, I just love the fact that after, after he, they ask him this question, they're like, well, let me put it this way. Okay. Let's, let's make it personal for you. Let's make it personal. Mm-hmm. So if you, if one of your sheep fall down, what are you going to do? You know, are you going to just let it go? You're just going to let it die? I mean, that's, that's a big deal for you, right? That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's an economy for you. That's money. That's, that's food. That's, that's maybe, that may be sacrifice for you. I don't know what that may, what that may necessarily be for you, but you're just going to let that go and let that die. No, you're not. You're going to do something about it. So let's make it personal. This is, this is a, this is a child of God. Yeah. This is somebody who's been, been created in the image of God. You're not going to do anything about it. I just think yeah. it's, mm. yeah. Well, God is a pot God, obviously, of people, mm-hmm. uh, of relationship, and not of rules and regulations. Uh, yeah. If somebody needs help, he's going to help. That's, yeah. that's, what, that's, that's, that's who he is. Yeah. And that's what he's instilled in us. Yeah. I mean, um, if there's someone to help, we, we, wanna help. Right. we want to help. We want to help. Um, I feel like we just talked about this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the Pharisees are obviously ticked off, and 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 I'm going to say, I think they were ticked off to the point of, and I've said these, I can remember saying these to my brother, I'll kill you when he did something to me. <laughs> but that's what they were. They were so mad that they now they they wanted to kill him, but but they didn't want it to. They they didn't want it, the blood to be on their hands they mm-hmm. wanted it to be someone else's hands so yeah they're they're now starting to plot and plan and do evil mm-hmm. so i just just for a moment I, we don't have to go very far in this but i just want to for a moment go into this next phrase yeah we got time this next i just want to go into this next this next verse right here it says aware of this jesus withdrew from that place so i just find that i find that very interesting that that jesus was completely aware of it. He wasn't. He wasn't foolish and filled with pride and knowing, knowing that. Hey, listen, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be wise in this situation. I'm gonna withdraw from this because it's not time yet. First of all, it's not time yet. And second of all, just we're just gonna. We're just we need to do what's right in this situation. Let's de-escalate it. And uh, I just, I just, I love that. That just really popped out to me when I was reading this earlier. Just like aware of this, Jesus withdrew. From that place just knew like okay it's i know what you're gonna i know what you're looking for that's fine i'm gonna back off and uh well that that is a cool point because we see jesus almost um looking for a fight that time <laughs> i mean almost challenging them um and and i mean just teaching them and then and then now, when they have uh, uh, decided to, which he knew their thoughts, to plot against him to kill him, he's now withdrawing. It wasn't his time yet. It, I mean, had it been, he probably would have challenged them even more and said, and then they would have taken him right then and there. But no, this wasn't it. Yeah, he still had more teaching to do. He had still more things to do um, yeah. for him to but it just wasn't his time. Well, it even says so that when he left the area, many people followed him. Yeah. So, and he healed them. Not to yeah. jump in your, I'm read ahead. No, you're good. no absolutely. Yeah. But he's like, you know what? I made my point to you. I said what I needed to say. I'm going to peace out for a minute. <laughs> and I'm going to go minister to some more people. Yeah. yeah. People followed him. And he healed all the sick among them. I mean, how many times did we, did we read a sentence like this in the Bible? And we just kind of go, many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them. He warned them about to reveal. Wait a minute. Like, just imagine I just said, hey, I just stopped at this hospital. And everyone in the hospital, like, got better. Like, all of them, like, the cancer is gone and the, ki- the kid in the car accident and all of them. They're just all better. Like, people would be flocking to this hospital. That is a huge statement. People followed him. He healed all the sick among them. All. Yeah. Boom. All, all. 
<laughs> is worthy of worshiping and following and trusting yeah, right. and loving. That's right. He has the power and he has that authority. That's, right. That's yeah. good. That's good. Well, I think I think it's important that what we can what we can take from this and apply into maybe our our every day is is that we have to be careful to what we're clinging to. You know, what what is what is once again, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. We we'll make that very clear that that's what that's what he. But when we begin to attach our own our own preferences to it, mm. that's when that's when it starts to. That's where we have to begin to go. Okay, all right. I I'm I I need to make sure that I'm I'm lined up with this, and uh, that I don't have to see J Jesus face to face for that to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? That to be to be made aware that I'm um, um but we need to check ourselves because uh, we can easily get caught up in that. I, I can think of many times where I just get caught up in like, well, if they you know they didn't do that right, that's not that's not okay. You know, get get real puffed up and and think about man that they're just they're they're missing it. But when in reality, I'm the one that's missing it. So at some point your viewpoints and your passions and your soapbox for lack of a better term mm -hmm. distract you from serving the people around you yeah and somebody might be missing out on their follow jesus moment or their healing moment if jesus had said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna let these pharisees know i'm gonna follow through i'm gonna stand up for what is important to me yeah and there are times when you're like you know what his cause is greater than whatever cause I'm yeah. that that I'm impassioned about right now. Right, and here's the thing: it's not like these guys, these 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 Pharisees went away. They followed him everywhere he went. And they, they, they I, Rick, you had made a you made a point. Like it's almost like he was picking a fight. It's almost that moment of just like, okay, you're here, so you, let's talk about what's going on. Yeah. Like you, you're you're here all the time. You're waiting. You're waiting for it. So let's just talk. Let's let's. Let's bring the elephant into the room and let's have the conversation almost. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He and, wasn't afraid to do that. Yeah, exactly. And and so what I think is, um, it, it, yeah, they weren't going away. They're constantly bringing this up and bringing this up and, and or being being there and agitating almost. Almost even just their presence was probably just agitating, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, you know, and Ricky talked about, you know your brother and like, I'll kill you. Like probably because that brother was always there and, and picking and agitating. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, you, you, you've, you've spurred a, a thought in my head. Jesus came to this earth and you would have thought that the Sadducees and the Pharisees would have been his biggest supporters. Mm. I mean, they knew, the, they knew scripture. They knew he was coming. They knew all about that, and yet they were the ones who were the thorn in his side. So I look at this part of Scripture saying that, you know, they're always there. They're always – so I, I'm thinking of, of when I, when you, when anyone has turned their feet toward Christ, there's always that guy saying, yeah, well, and, and you'll be back. You'll be back to this lifestyle or – did I, what did I just hear come out of your mouth now that you've, and they're always microscoping you, yeah. always, yeah. and they always are trying to look for the bad, and yeah. that's exactly what the Pharisees were doing, they were trying to nitpick him to death, he had to be, oh my gosh, what patience he had to have, <laughs> and, 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 and thinking of the people that were around him. I'm wondering if he had to hold back some people, say, no, it's okay. They, you know, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I just, I can't imagine, can't imagine what he had to go through. And that was, that wasn't even the, I mean, he isn't even in the part of being tortured and, and sent to the cross yet. This is just what he has to go through to live life for, for just a little while. <clears throat> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Then don't, don't you feel like when people are scrutinizing you and really speaking negatively about you, that I mean that that's similar to torture. So 
Yeah. We had, so much of what we talk about for Jesus was, you know, the, the nails, the cross, the thorns, which are their own thing. Uh, but the the other forms of torture he endured by being judged by the people that he loved, the a person that he literally breathes life into actively uh, said his blood be upon us and our children, you know, yeah, that, that could have been the worst part of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, which being, which as times get worse, as the world gets worse and worse and and his coming gets closer and closer, we're going to endure that. Mm. And, mm. and and again as Americans, we've had it pretty easy. I don't know about those in this country, that country or where have you, uh where they've been persecuted to death. Yeah. Uh you know, you have to denounce him or or you die. Well, I, I hope I never have to face that. So, I hope no one would ever have to. One thing that's popped in my mind, and I, I want to uh, real quick just say it before, and then we'll maybe get into prayer here real quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just think, I just think, I'm thinking about these, these Pharisees, and and I'm thinking they're so looking for, they're so looking for offense right now that yeah. they're not even. I, I, I almost wonder if they're even hearing the rest of what he has to say. You know what I mean? You think about you think about it in your own life. Like if you're looking for it, if you're looking like you're going into it, waiting for them, just as you just know that somebody's going to say something that's going to that's going to offend you. Like you don't even necessarily hear it. You don't even hear the rest of it. You just hear that that piece and then you turn it and you make it into what you wanted to make it. And then it turns into a bigger thing. And I think that, that that's the other thing that maybe we can take away from that. It's like, hey, let, why don't we just listen to everything he has to say? Let's listen to what everyone, yeah. everything has to say. Because, and that man, that whoo, we're gonna talk about something that needs to be talked about nowadays. Right there is, is it. Like, let's listen. How about we have the whole conversation? <laughs> yes. so, if you haven't been taking notes on the seven fourteen, I hope that this is the morning that you're taking notes because that was good. That is excellent. Like, yeah. sometimes we're we're looking to be offended. Like, I'm literally waiting for the words that. That come out of your mouth to be offensive, and and that's yep. what I'm expecting yep. them to be. Go, just talk. Go ahead. <laughs> Grab a hold of that word, unoffendable. There it is. Unoffendable. There it is. Awesome. Well, hey, let's let's pray and let's uh, let's do this thing. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Levi, you want to pray quick? Sure. All right. Yeah. I'll get started. I'll Rick. pray for the country. All right. Here we go. Plan. <clears throat> Man, God, I just love so much that we get to get together and and all these other people joining us online and watching later, but really just look into your word in a way that m most of us just never would. So, God, I thank you that we can see really the humanity of Jesus and the, and the, the complex social struggles he had with being challenged by probably some of the same people who taught him those taught him God's word. And we're earlier amazed at his wisdom and knowledge, you know. So we thank you that for all that Jesus endured, both on the cross and on the earth and, and just living humanity and being scorned by people, a uh, people he loved. So help us to be more like Jesus in that way that, like we just said, unoffend be, be un being unoffendable and showing love in all the situations to the point of death, to the point of judgment, to the point of scrutiny. Thank you, God, that you can empower us to do that because we know Jesus has done that. Yes, Lord. Father God, we pray for the United States and every nation of this world to um, bow their knee to you, uh, to turn from our wicked ways and turn back to you, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray for... Uh, the leadership of every country and especially for the United States. I pray for our president, our vice president. I pray that we would um, uh, honor them as the office that they hold. And uh, Lord God, uh, I just pray for this upcoming election and there might be other elections throughout this world, I don't know, but the upcoming election coming up, Lord, I pray that you would put uh, the right leaders in place. And uh, Lord God, I pray that we would follow um, your lead 
and being humble and uh, serving um, our country in one way or another. Father, I pray for all of those um, who protect our freedom, uh, who protect our rights. And uh, uh, Lord, I just ask your blessing on them, your hedge of protection, and Father. Thank you. Thank you for life itself. Thank you that uh, Jesus has shown us uh, the way and given us a, the perfect example to follow. So, Father, uh, we just thank you for these uh, get-togethers that we, we get to have and discuss and share with one another and share with those who would care to listen. Father, we, we thank you, we love you, and uh, we praise the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for being with us sure. this morning. Yeah. Thank you all out there for being with us. Don't forget at home baptisms. If you have not been baptized or you feel like that's spurring on to, I need to, maybe this is my next step that I need to make, um, get a hold of us. We'll walk you through where we'll get you where you need to send the, the video in and we'll just get you going. So, um, man, have a great one. Have a great one. Be unoffendable today. Let's, let's have the whole conversation, right? All right. All right, guys, everybody have a great one. Take care.